Hi guys, Andrew here with Headphones.com, and this is me now. Now, you might be thinking, wait, this guy normally isn't into the whole cartoon people vibe. What's going on here? Well, I was out for a bike ride, wearing a nice pair of electrostatic headphones, powered off the Stax portable energizer, of course, when out of nowhere, a freak thunderstorm occurred. Let's just say I had a transformative experience and was horribly disfigured. And now I'm only able to produce videos as a digital version of my former self. I thought about quitting and hanging it all up, but I figured today of all days, I need to keep going. And so today I want to announce, or I guess draw attention to the fact that we're now doing source gear measurements. For the longest time, we were primarily focused on headphone measurements. And this is of course, because we felt frequency response was the most important thing. But it turns out people also want to see DAC and amp measurements. People want to know if the equipment they're buying is objectively good enough. And of course, without measurements, we're all at the mercy of unreliable subjective pronouncements that wax poetic about the sound quality, when really we know that people care much more about imperceptible differences. But you see, the thing is, while traditional methods of measuring source equipment have really only been able to provide you with extra bragging rights that your source equipment has minus 120 dB harmonic distortion compared to your friend's measly minus 100 dB, our our new method of measuring source equipment allows us to determine all kinds of additional things. For example, we're now able to measure soundstage, depth, dynamics, resolution, and so on. And if you want to see our initial measurements, those are already up on headphones.com. But I wanted to briefly also go over our measurement process so you can see how we're able to measure these qualities objectively. And it's actually kind of crazy that this hasn't been done before. Now, the first thing that's needed in order to measure this stuff is, of course, the very famous Audio Precision APX555 which costs over 5 million shillings. Of course it's in shillings. Then what you do is you throw that in the trash and you bring out this. This is the latest and greatest state-of-the-art Master Pro tape measure, which gives us the most accurate and highest resolution results and is compliant with the new IEC 60318-7 2022 measurement standard. Let's run through how this works with the SPL Phonator X right here, which is a high-performance headphone amplifier. Let's say we want to measure soundstage. So the first thing we want to do for that is get a sense of soundstage width. We basically measure the lateral distance of the unit like this, from one side to the other. Then we want to measure soundstage depth, and this is how much extra depth the amplifier gives your headphones, and by doing this. And of course, who can forget about soundstage height? You want to know when sounds are coming from above you, which is especially important for safety reasons. Doing it this way is going to give you a very complete picture of what the soundstage representation is going to be or how your soundstage is going to be enhanced by the amplifier that you're considering buying. Now, we can also measure macro contrast, how much slam the amp gives you. And we can do this by measuring this knob right here. Now, one mistake people often make when trying to measure this is they go for just the diameter and the surface area of the knob on this side here. But really, you also have to measure the depth of the knob. This is how you're able to fully assess knob girth, which as we all know, contributes significantly to this quality. Now, is this a warm amp? Is it a bright amp? To figure this out, we have to use a color temperature meter. We need to assess the tint, tone, and luminance of the faceplate, because that's how you really know if something's going to be bright or warm or has any kind of colorations beyond frequency response. And this is, of course, far better than relying on all those biased, subjective opinions you read online. We can also use this technique to measure the euphony of tube amps. In short, the more luminance from the tubes, the more euphony you get. Now, getting back to the Phonator X here, you might be wondering, what about all these other knobs? What about VU meters? Well, as it turns out, while it may seem like these are important things to measure, in reality, they don't actually mean what you think they mean. And ultimately, they don't contribute to the subjective experience whatsoever when it comes to headphones. You see, these just give an indication of time domain information, which, as we all know, is proportional to frequency response. So you've got your impulse response, and you've got your square wave, and you've got your cumulus spectral decay, the waterfall plots, and as I've mentioned many times, these are just other worse ways of looking at frequency response. So we don't bother with those. Now, after doing all of these additional measurements, we're able to give a more complete, objective picture of how the amplifier performs. Unfortunately, it's all far too complicated for people to understand. We know people won't be able to make sense of all of these additional metrics to get a sense of whether it's good or not, or better than what they may have had before. And so because of that, we've decided to combine all these metrics together into an all-important holy grail index of amp and DAC performance. And we can even rank them against one another. And for those who may be unfamiliar, this is known as Synad. So anytime you see Synad online, just remember this is what it refers to. Anyways, like I mentioned, look forward to these new DAC and AMP measurements that will be posted to the audio files up on headphones.com. We wanted to provide these additional metrics for a long time, and I'm so thankful that now we can. I hope this video has been informative.
And after saying all that, I now need to go find a strong drink to make me forget that I'm now a VTuber. See you in the next video. <laughs> it thinks my normal face is this. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of two things. It's either this or or this. <laughs>